Good morning. Trying to make a video for a while here. It's like starts to get kind of rambling. Um, try not to ramble. I wanted to talk to about uh, talk to you about a video I saw talking about the pineal gland in the brain and how it's you know it's basically the third eye. They call it the third eye, and it can help with intuition and things like that. And um, this girl that I was watching her video, she was, um, she showed a, a David Wilcock video and, um, he was talking about, you know, what, what can it ca what causes calcification of it and basically our, you know, standard American diet and that we can clean that up by eating a lot more fish oils. And he was saying meat in particular has chemicals in it that help with the pineal gland, which is interesting. Um, it's interesting on a, on the level of how we've been pushed into, I feel that these, um, religious spiritual movements push people into a vegetarian vegan diet lifestyle. And, uh, because of HIMSA, you know, doing no harm. And I just think it's a big scam. I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't understand, uh, how making your body weak and deficient can be spiritual. Um, I, I think it's a scam and this is kind of a validation of the point. It's not, you know, not that I need validation. I'm, I'm doing the diet that I'm doing because I, my health and it's helping me become healthy again, but it is something to think about how, you know, think about if you wanted to control a culture, let's say, let's say you had the masses, we'll call it, just call it the masses out there and you want to control the masses. Would you want them eating? you know, things that were going to make them strong and rebellious and, um, obstinate, you know, people, uh, that are going to be free willed and not succumb to the authoritarian pressure. No, you're going to want people that are weak. You're going to want people that are physically, mentally weak. And how do you do that diet? Make their diet deficient. Our, def our diet right now is just completely deficient. The, the food people eat at the um, the standard American diet, which I will say this right now, is still better than a vegan diet. And I would even caution to say it's better than a vegetarian diet, depending on what a vegetarian eats. If a vegetarian eats meat, not meat products, they don't eat meat, but if they eat eggs and cheese and milk products, they're probably going to be okay. But if you go pure vegan, you're not going to be okay. This is something that has been proven many times. Um, there's many channels out there that you can get into if you want, um, to talk about the deficiencies of a vegan, vegan lifestyle. But yeah, it seems like that's kind of where we're being pushed into with a lot of these, um, quote unquote, spiritual paths. And I don't understand it. I, I just don't get it. I've never seen someone have a near death experience and talk about, oh, they told me that I was a meat eater, so I'm not going to heaven or something like that. And um, do no harm, the, the, the concept of do no harm is, you know, that there's a lot of stuff to that. There's a, there's a lot of angles to that do no harm. And um, it could pro they probably wrote up, you know, lots of, uh, you know, doctoral theses on it in India. So I'm not even going to try to go there because I don't know. But I just know that doing harm to your body by eating a deficient diet how is that practicing ahimsa? You know, if you should protect and take care of anything, it's this body that you're living in. And, um, you know, I guess you could say that's being selfish, but ultimately, if you don't have your physical health, and we all know this, if, you know, once you lose your physical health, you ain't got much. And um, it's a mad scramble to try to get back to health. And it's very confusing and very, um, there's a lot of, disinformation out there that keeps people in this sickened state. You know, it's easy to go to the doctor and have the doctor tell you and prescribe to you. It takes, takes the brain work out of it. But the reality is you can have your greatest spiritual growth from being sick, being ill, trying to come back from an illness, trying to work your way back from an injury. These things require um, mind, body, spirit, you know, combination. And I think it's part of developing free, not free will, but part of developing, um, you know, uh, manifestation.
learning to manifest reality. It, it can teach us a lot when we're sick. And, um, but, you know, what I've concluded is that being sick is kind of where they want us to be. You know, this is the system, the system controllers want us to be sick. They want us to be weak. They don't want us to be strong. And, um, we won't fight back if we're, you know, barely able to get off the couch. And this COVID thing is, I, I mean, you got to look at what's going on with that in terms of how people have just succumbed to the. Now, there's a couple different angles on this. It, it makes common sense if you're in a weakened immune system, a weakened state, to not be out in public, to not be exposed to um, anything if you can't help it. However, every winter we get the flu. Every single winter we get a different strain of flu. No matter how many vaccinations you get, the flu changes every year. So why aren't people walking around with masks and gloves and, and covering up for the seasonal flu? I mean, think about that. What, what would we think about the lost productivity, you know, it, when you get the flu and you miss a week of work or two weeks of work or you get hospitalized or whatever? I mean, it's massive. It's a massive drain. So maybe something good will come out of this uh, COVID and that people will start taking more precautions just with the regular flu. You know, I mean, I, I, I've seen flu years at the hospital where every patient had the flu and we had, we filled up one year. We had the hospital was full. I mean, full. We had, it made the COVID thing look like nothing. I mean, we had people on vents. We had uh, uh, the floors were just filled to the capacity with, with flu patients and you know nobody freaked out nobody um shut the country down and you know, nobody cared nobody even noticed right i only knew because i was at work every day getting my butt kicked and so it's kind of like we have completely gone off the rails with this covid completely off the rails and yes people are dying of it and but if you're if you're in a weakened system, if you have a weakened immune system, which honestly most people do, um, I was reading one guy and he was saying like 80% of people have metabolic syndrome, which is basically when you're, you know, you have too much fat, you're you have uh, decreased insulin sensitivity, um, you're you're basically pre-diabetic or diabetic, and that increases your risk of dying of this COVID by a lot. Well, most people have it. You know, most people are in this metabolic imbalance and it's, it's, um, it's a national tragedy. We, this is what we should be focusing on is how do we get people back to health? How do we get people in a state where they're not going to get sick? If they catch something, they'll get better. I mean, you can't run around what are you going to do? I mean, there's going to be something else, right? We'll have the a flu season next year. We'll have, I mean, every year we're going to have the flu. I mean, it starts in November, December, and it goes through till, you know, February, March, every single year. I mean, I work at the hospital. I know this. They have um, some hospitals hire extra staff just for the flu. I mean, I get a lot of overtime because of the flu. So, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. I go to the store, I go to Costco today and everybody's got a mask on. They're wearing, they're wearing gloves. They're wearing masks. Like they're, I mean, it's just, I have to laugh. It's absurd. It's completely absurd. They're met, I mean, if you're metabolically healthy and for me, that means, you know, getting off of the carbs, getting off the sugar, getting off the crap. If you're metabolically healthy, you're going to be all right. You're going to be okay. You know? And another thing, too, you're going to die of something. We're all going to get sick and die. Well, we don't necessarily get sick. We might just die. Hopefully, that'll just die. But without the sickness, that'd be awful. I don't want to be sick. But if you're in a state of constant inflammation, like most people, the chances of catching something are very, very high. They talk about this COVID causing a cytokine storm. So basically, if you're in a, state of inflammation all the time 
and then you get exposed to something like this, your body overreacts. It's like a uh, when you have um, allergies or you have asthma, COPD, what happens with those people is they're in a constant state of inflammation. They're always in a state of inflammation. So when they get hit with a cold, I mean, I've seen people hospitalized because they caught a cold. I mean, they're walking around in this completely unstable state. They're just a, they're a disaster looking for a place to happen. And, you know, we have to take responsibility for that. We got to take responsibility for our health. You know, we got to clean up our act. We can't shut the country down because people are, you know, out of shape and metabolically unstable. I mean, look, think about where we're going with this. I mean, this is a this is going to be a complete collapse of our society. You know, they talked about Rome falling because there was lead in the pipes. Well, we're going to fall because there's sugar everywhere. When they look back at our, our at our society, let's say it was sugar. Sugar brought them down. It's in everything. Sugar is in everything. So, anyway, kind of a rant, but hope you have a good one.